Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the racket drop leak. And this is a problem on the surf that's even present on the professional tour. Before I explain what the racket drop leak is, first, let me show you how a surf can be struck in the most optimal way. So the surf should be accelerated when the racket reaches the trophy phase. So independent what type of surf style you have, what type of backswing, whether you have a platform stance or a pinpoint stance, the body should be loaded and ready to accelerate into the ball when the racket has reached this position. And let me show you on my serve. So I'm going to accelerate my serve at the moment when the racket reaches the trophy phase. Take a look. And when the serve is accelerated in the most optimal way, the racket drop occurs so fast, it is not visible to the naked eye. Let me hit another serve. You try to look if you can see my racket drop. So there you probably couldn't see how exactly my racket is dropping and that's a good sign. Now it's a bad sign when you see a player and you can actually see the racket leaking into the racket drop before it's accelerated. So basically what the racket drop leak is, is a slowly dropping racket into the racket drop and then the actual real acceleration starts from a lower point and that is a disadvantage to an optimally struck serve where the acceleration starts from the trophy phase. So we have a lot more range of motion. There's more room to accelerate when we do it from here versus doing it from a lower place. So let me show you a serve with a racket drop leak. So basically I'm going to start slowly dropping the racket and then accelerate from a lower place. And the difference between my serve and the serve with the racket drop leak is not huge. It's not 20 miles an hour difference, maybe it's two to five miles an hour. So this is not a huge problem and it's exactly why you see even some professional players with this problem. One example is Kiki Burton. She has a racket drop leak. So if you ever watch her serve, you will see that the racket slowly drops in here with an open face and then she accelerates it from somewhere around here. So she's not striking her serve optimally. She could hit a little, little bit better, but still, She's one of the best servers of the WTA, so this is not that big of a problem. But when it comes to tennis, there's always room for improvement, and this is true for some of the best players in the world, including Federer. You can always get a little bit better. So if you do happen to have a racket drop leak where the racket is slowly dropping into the racket drop and you're accelerating from a lower place, and there's no reason why you shouldn't change this. You should always try uh, to improve your strokes to the most optimal way. And here is how you can correct the racket drop leak. So most likely it's stemming from a pause in the trophy phase. Often serves with an abbreviated style where the racket has to pause here or an up together type serve where the toss arm and the hitting arm go up together. And now while the ball is still in the air, the racket is pausing here. And a lot of players will in this pause slowly start to leak the racket into the racket drop. And a great corrective technique is serving with a lag. See, what happens on a lag serve is we're gonna to toss the ball and lag the racket behind. And now, once that ball is in the air, my racket's gonna start going up. And now that ball is gonna to start to drop. And now I don't have any more time to slow down or even stop. I'm gonna to have to gradually accelerate my racket to catch up with the ball. So let me show you a lag serve. So I'm gonna to toss the ball first, lag the racket behind you. We'll see that the racket will gradually have to accelerate and there will be no time to stop. So I strongly encourage you to try the lag serve. It is the most commonly used serve on the professional tour and it might even help you with your racket drop leak. Now another possible cause of the racket drop leak is an isolated movement of the wrist in the racket drop phase. So some players will go up in the trophy phase and now they will do an isolated movement of the wrist. And if you look at my racket, this is a racket drop leak. You see my racket is dropping. Now this doesn't mean that this is gonna turn into a waiter serve necessarily because if we, we can still achieve a full racket drop even though the wrist is bending backward. Now one technique that might help you get rid of the isolated movement of the wrist in the racket drop is the bending of the wrist in the preparation stage. And a lot of professional players use this method and one that's famous for it is Milos Raonic who severely flexes or bends his wrist in the preparation stage. Now if you do this in the beginning phase of the serve and now you go into your serve style you will see that the racket is going to be more on the hitting side if the wrist remains bent. 
And now once you are in this position, you are less likely to now bend the wrist backwards. So I can show you from this angle. So if I bend it in the preparation stage and I go up, you see the wrist is still bent. And now once I accelerate, I'm less likely to make an isolated movement on the wrist and extend it this way. So let me try one of these serves where I bend my wrist in the beginning stage of the serve. So I'm gonna try it like round it. So I'm gonna severely bend it. Now take a look how my racket is traveling up into the trophy phase. As you can see there, I started with a more bent wrist in the preparation stage. And now as my racket was going up, the wrist remained on the hitting side of the body. And this actually felt really comfortable as I was executing my serve. And now once I accelerated my serve, my wrist was safe from going all the way back into an extremely extended position, or in other words, making that isolated movement of the wrist uh, with nothing else happening in the body. And the most important thing when it comes to the racket drop leak is the timing of your serve. And this can get quite complex, and I'll try to simplify it for you as much as you can. And to put it simply, you don't want any long pauses in the most important stage of your serve, which is the acceleration stage. Now, when does the serve start to accelerate the fastest? It is in the trophy phase position. So if you find yourself waiting in this area, uh, there's gonna be problems. And there's a couple of problems that can occur if you have long pauses in the trophy phase of your serve. Let's say you don't have a racket drop leak and you are pausing and keeping the racket on the hitting side of the body. Now this is not optimal either because you lost all your momentum from setting up your take back and now you have to accelerate from zero to 100. Or even worse, what happens to a lot of players is they pause in this position and they start slowly leaking the racket into the racket drop and they're losing a little bit of acceleration because of that. So what you have to do in order to defeat this problem, you have to structure your serve in a way where once you have reached this position, the body should be fully loaded and ready to accelerate. So let me show you how that works on my serve. So by the time I'm ready to accelerate, everything's going to be loaded and there's actually not going to be any time for me to go into a racket drop leak. So take a look here. I'm going to set up my serve in a way where once I have reached that trophy phase, there's not going to be any more time to stop or slow down. Now, one exception where leaking the racket slowly into the racket drop might be okay is if you happen to have a way to serve. You can use this as a corrective technique. You can check out my video titled uh, Fix Your Way to Serve, where I explain in detail why this is the case. However, if you don't have a way to serve, leaking the racket into the racket drop is completely unnecessary, and you should use the methods provided in this video to get rid of it. And you should always strive to hit your serve in the most optimal way.